let me show you see here just give me one minute Again, one more technical issue. I couldn't play the videos. Sorry guys, actually this format is not supportable. I could not able to play the videos uh, in the app, in this uh, uh, keynote. So anyway, what I'm trying to put into your mind is, see this uh, uterus, this uterus, it will come down, it will come down through the vaginal canal. This uterus, it will come down, it will fall into the vaginal canal. That's what I want to put into your mind. Okay, now in the later class, you will understand how that actually happens, what are the risk factors and how to treat it. But now let's start. Why in a normal female? Why in a normal female? The uterus is not prolapsing because there are certain important supports. Okay, there are certain important supports for a uterus. What are these supports? Let's go one by one. Normally, the pelvic organs, okay, the pelvic organs are supported by muscles. So even our uterus okay even uterus is supported by certain important muscles here you can see there are muscles in the pelvic floor these muscles are actually holding the uterus in its place imagine this is the uterus and there are certain pelvic floor muscles on which uterus is sitting and these pelvic floor muscles are the ones which are giving the support for the uterus if there is any weakness in these muscles what will happen if there is any weakness in these muscles there will be Uterine prolapse will occur. Uterine prolapse will occur. So, what are these muscles? What are these important muscles? These important muscles are called as pubococcygeus and iliococcygeus. The pubococcygeus and iliococcygeus, which are a part of levia trani muscles, they form pelvic diaphragm. They form pelvic diaphragm. Okay, this pelvic diaphragm is the one which supports the uterus. It is supporting the uterus and keeping the uterus in its place. Okay. Now, this pelvic diaphragm is supplied by which nerve it is supplied by pudendal nerve okay the pelvic diaphragm is supplied by pudendal nerve now see all the muscles are supplied by nerves or not yes muscles are supplied by nerves no doubt now pudendal nerve is giving innervation to pelvic diaphragm now whenever there is damage to pudendal nerve now these muscles the pelvic diaphragm will be weakened. The tone of the pelvic diaphragm is going to be weakened. So, any condition which will cause a damage of pudendal nerve will lead to weakening of the pelvic diaphragm. Now, whenever the pelvic diaphragm is weakened, what happens? It is no longer able to support the uterus. So, uterine prolapse will occur. Uterine prolapse will occur. Okay. So, this condition, damage to the pudendal nerve will lead to pelvic organ prolapse. This is one of the important cause. Now, in this diagram, okay, in this slide, what I am trying to show you is, sir, here is your uterus. Here is your uterus. Not only the pelvic diaphragm, there are certain important other muscles also, which are going to help your uterus and vagina to be in its place. There are certain other, other muscles, which are keeping the uterus and vagina to be in its place. What are those muscles? Guys, are you able to see here? I have already discussed with you the levator ani muscles. These levator ani muscles, they are coming into the midline. So, they will come into the midline and they are trying to hold the uterus. They will try to hold the uterus and they will try to hold the vaginal walls in its place. Apart from that, any muscles which are coming into the midline, which will come and insert into the midline, they all will support the uterus. Something like deep transverse perineal muscle. Here there is one more muscle which is bulbospongiosus. You can see bulbospongiosus, deep transverse perineal muscle. Okay. 
So external urethral sphincter, which is present in the, which is again present in the midline. So what I'm trying to put into your mind is, there are certain important muscle group, which will try to hold the uterus in its place. What are they, sir? The mnemonic which I'm going to use here is BLESD, blessed, BLESD. You can keep it in your mind, BLESD. So which muscles? Bulbous spongiosus, levator ani muscles, external urethral sphincter or external anal sphincter. Superficious transverse perineae and deep transverse perineae. So, superficial transverse perineae, deep transverse perineae, bulbous spongiosus, external urethral sphincter, alleviator ani muscles, all these muscles, they are holding the uterus in its place. So, that uterus is not falling down into the vagina. Okay. Now, important MCQ in your exams, once this question was asked, the ischio cavernosus and ischio coccygeus. Okay, ischio cavernosus and ischio coccygeus. Ischio cavernosus and ischio coccygeus. These muscles, they are not the supports of uterus. They are not the supports of uterus. What are the supports of uterus? I have discussed here. These are the muscles which are supporting the uterus and preventing the pop, pelvic organ prolapse. Now, after seeing the muscular supports, okay, we have discussed about the muscles. Muscles group is completed. I have given you the muscles which are supporting the uterus. Now, let's talk about the mechanical supports. Now, uterus is supported mechanically by what? See, there is something important concept called as angle of antiversion and angle of antiflexion. Sir, what is this antiversion and antiflexion? Guys, have you ever wondered, see, uterus, cervix and vagina, they are not in one single plane. The uterus, the fundus of the uterus and the body of the uterus and the cervix. The uterine fundus, body, cervix and vagina, they are not lying straight. They are not in one single plane like this. Actually, if you see, this is how the uterus and vagina are. The uterus is totally bent and the uterine fundus is actually falling onto the bladder. So, uterus, cervix and vagina, they are more angulated with each other. Now, please see here. Now, let's start with this, guys. Let's start with this blue color line. Now, what is this blue color line? This is the axis of the vagina. Okay, this blue color line is the axis of the vagina. Now, the axis of the vagina is now it's making an angle with the axis of the cervix. Now, red color line, what I am showing you is the axis of the cervix. So, this is axis of the cervix and this blue color line is the axis of the vagina. So, vagina and cervix, they are not just straight like this. They are not just straight. The cervix is making is it's making an angle with the axis of the vagina. This is called as angle of antiversion. Okay, this is called the angle of antiversion. And even see, this black color line, whatever I'm showing you, this is the axis of the uterus. Okay, this is the axis of the uterine body. And the axis of the uterus is making an angle with the axis of the cervix. Now, what is this called as, sir? This is called as angle of antiflexion. So, there are two important angles. Antiversion. This one, okay, here, the angle between the axis of the vagina and the angle between the axis of the cervix, which is actually making an angle of one, which is, which is actually making an angle of 90 degrees, okay, 90 degrees, this angle is a 90 degree angle and there is one more angle, which is angle of antiflexion. So, the angle between uterine body, angle between the axis of uterine body and axis of cervix, what is this? Antiflexion, how much degrees? 120 degrees. Now, because of the antiversion and antiflexion, uterus is falling, uterus is lying on the bladder. So, now this bladder is mechanically supporting the uterus. Okay, if there is no bladder, what will happen? Imagine if there is no bladder, uterus will fall. So, uterus is lying on the bladder, the fundus of the uterus is lying on the bladder. So, this bladder is actually supporting the uterus. So, angle of antiversion and angle of antiflexion, anti they are acting as a mechanical support for the uterus. Now, important points, sir. What are the important points? Now, whenever retroversion happens in the topic of endometriosis also, we have discussed, guys. In the topic of endometriosis, we have discussed because of the inflammation, there will be formation of adhesions. So, those adhesions will cause retroversion. In yesterday's topic, endometriosis, we have discussed, retroversion of uterus will happen. Retroversion is, a most common, uh, is one of the findings in a female who is suffering with endometriosis. So, here, retroversion of the uterus, it can lead to prolapse. Why? Because now, there is no mechanical support. 
okay this is the bladder this is the uterus normally uterus is lying on the bladder now whenever the uterus is retroverted it is more prone to prolapse now after that sir we have discussed about antiversion and antiflexion what is the ligament which is helping in antiversion antiversion is because of which ligament sir there is one important ligament that ligament is the one responsible for the bending that that ligament is the one responsible for the bending of uterus on to the bladder i will show you don't worry so which ligament round ligament so round ligament helps in antiversion and which ligament prevents the retroversion so the ligament which is preventing the retroversion is a uterosacral ligament uterosacral ligament prevents the retroversion and antiversion is because of round ligament guys now if you see this slide here i have clearly shown you guys this is the anterior side of the body the one like you know the point of which I, where i am placing is the anterior side of the body or i should say that like you know the ventral side of the body ventral side okay and this side is the dorsal side of the body how can we say here is the vertebra see vertebra are present back posterior side and this is the anterior side of the body now here is your uterus guys here is your uterus and this is the urinary bladder you can clearly see the uterus is actually falling onto the urinary bladder okay uterus is actually lying onto the urinary bladder with the help of this green color ligament are you guys able to appreciate this green color ligament it is attaching to the uterus see on one side it is attaching to the uterus and this green color ligament it is going forward so the green color ligament which is nothing but the round ligament round ligament it is attaching to the uterus and it is pulling the uterus towards anterior side so the uterus is becoming anti flexed anti flexed okay so this and this uh, anti flexion is because of the round ligament now tell me ligament which keeps the uterus antiverted and anti flexed is round ligament round ligament so anti flexion is maintained by the round ligament and very important point there is one more important ligament which i want to discuss here guys actually there are three important ligament as supports of the uterus now itself i am discussing here there are three important ligament as supports previously what we have discussed we have discussed about the muscular supports b l s e d blessed like blessed muscles bulbospongiosis levator ani muscles external al sphincter external urethral sphincter we have discussed about the muscles previously now what we are discussing we are discussing about the mechanical supports right now Okay, angle of antiversion and angle of antiflexion. Later, we will discuss about the ligamentous supports. There are certain important ligaments which are holding the uterus in its place. Ligamentous supports. Now, let's see what are those ligaments. See, this is your uterus. Okay, this is the uterus of a female. Now, actually, I have told you the uterus is lying onto the bladder. This is the bladder. Okay, let me write it down here. This is the bladder. Okay, this is the bladder. This is the uterus, and posteriorly, what do you have? Here is the rectum, and these are the vertebrae. Now, important point is the three important ligamentous supports to the uterus, sir. The first ligament is coming from the pubis, and it is going onto the urinary bladder, uh, going onto the uterus. So, first ligament is starting from the pubis, going to the uterus. Which area of the uterus? Cervix. So this called this ligament, this green color ligament, which I am showing you, is called as pubo cervical ligament. Pubo cervical ligament, starting from the pubis, going to the cervix of the uterus. So pubo cervical ligament. The second ligament, which I am going to discuss, is this red color ligament, which is in a fan shape. Okay, this red color ligament, which is present transversely. Okay, which is attaching the uterus to the pelvic side wall. so this ligament which i am showing you in red color this ligament is called as a transverse ligament or cardinal ligament transverse ligament or cardinal ligament very very important support very very important support and the third ligament which i am going to show you is attaching to the uterus anteriorly and this ligament is going back and attaching to the sacrum so this ligament is utero sacral ligament on one side to the uterus on other side to the sacrum sacrum okay sacral vertebra so utero sacral ligaments so what are the three important ligament supports of the uterus pubo cervical ligament transverse ligament and utero sacral ligament now this utero sacral ligament is there right this violet color one the utero sacral ligament it actually prevents the retroversion okay it prevents the retroversion okay remember now let's see important ligamentous supports 
So, actually the ligaments are, act, are divided into three types. What are they? Sir, the primary supports, primary supports, secondary supports and not at all a support. See, I am classifying the ligaments into three groups. The first group are the actual true ligaments. The first group are the actual true ligaments. They actually support the uterus. What are they already we have discussed? Pubocervical, from the pubis to the cervix, pubocervical ligament. Cardinal ligament or transverse ligament is the second one. And uterosacral ligament, they are actually the primary support, the true ligaments, they are the true ligaments. Guys, we also have discussed something about the round ligament, right? Round ligament, which is the one responsible for antiversion and antiflexion. Now, round ligament is actually not a true ligament, but still, but still, it causes antiversion and antiflexion. Because of the antiversion and antiflexion, it have mechanical support. So, it's a secondary support. So, round ligament is considered as a secondary support to the uterus, not a primary support, not a true ligament. It's not a true ligament. And there is one more important ligament, which was there for the uterus. That ligament is called as a broad ligament, broad ligament. So, broad ligament is not a ligament at all. It's a, it's a false name. Broad ligament is not a ligament. It's not a support. So, now tell me, what are the supports of the uterus? What are the ligament of support? The ligament of supports are mainly classified into three groups. The true supports are the primary supports, which includes the pubocervical. Transverse ligaments are cardinal ligament, which is also called as the Mac and Rods ligament. See, these cardinal supports, these cardinal ligaments, they have other names like transverse ligament or Mac and Rods ligament. Mac and Rods. We will discuss further also. And pubocervical, transverse ligaments and uterosacral ligaments. The secondary supports are the round ligaments, which are the ones responsible for the antiversion and antiflexion. Broad ligament is not a ligament at all. It does not support the uterus. Now, after this, let's discuss about the risk factors. Okay, right now, let's discuss about the risk factors of genital prolapse, which is a very, very important area. Now, from the entire topic of genital prolapse, two areas of our utmost importance. What are the risk factors of genital prolapse? Why prolapse is happening in the first place? And how to treat it? Two areas which are very much important are why prolapse is happening, what are the risk factors and how to treat a prolapse in different different age group events are the two important areas which you need to know for your exams. So, first let's start with the what are the risk factors. Now, the first risk factor, let's start from here, menopause. Menopause is considered as a risk factor. Now, why? Menopause means the female is getting into her 50s. Now, she is 51, 52 or 53. Now, tell me, in a woman who is 50 years or 52 years or 55 years, what happened to her muscle strength? What happens to her muscular tone? Muscular tone decreases. Automatically, the pelvic diaphragm, the tone of the pelvic diaphragm, the tone of the levia trani muscles is also going to be compromised. It is also going to be decreased. So, what happens? The pelvic diaphragm is weakened. Whenever pelvic diaphragm, the muscular support, whenever the muscular support got weakened, it will lead to prolapse, it will lead to genital prolapse, it will lead to uterine prolapse. So, menopause is considered as a risk factor. Now, the second risk factor is traumatic deliveries. Traumatic deliveries. Now, what does I, what does I mean by traumatic deliveries? So, usually during deliveries, whenever they are complicated, we use suction. We use suction to take out the baby. We use forceps, okay, for delivering the baby. Now, imagine the one who is applying this suction, okay, or the, uh, the intern, whoever is applying this suction or uh, <clears throat> the nurse who is like, you know, putting this forceps in a wrong manner, applying the forceps in a wrong manner can actually damage the muscles, okay. So, instrumentation like forceps or vacuum can actually damage the pelvic diaphragm or this instrumentation can actually damage the pudendal nerve. So, what happens ultimately? The pelvic floor is weakened, sir. Whenever pelvic floor is weakened, it can lead to uterine prolapse. Very simple. So, traumatic deliveries like faulty instrumentation, pudendal nerve damage or ligamentous tears. Okay, ligamentous, ligaments got teared. Okay, while you are applying the forceps, you are putting the forceps in a very uh, wrong manner that these forceps can damage the ligaments. Pubocervical ligaments, uterosacral ligaments or the cardinal ligaments might get damaged so that she can have uterine prolapse after delivery. Now, 
The third important risk factor is repeated childbirths or multiparity. Many, many number of births. So, if she is delivering so many times, what happened to the pelvic diaphragm? What happened to the pelvic musculature? They got weakened. Whenever they got weakened, increases the risk of uterine prolapse. Simple. Now, precipitate labor or prolonged labor. Prolonged labor means labor is taking so much time. So much time. It's taking hours and hours. Prolonged labor means labor taking too much time. So, during this period, what's happening? Sir, all her pelvic muscles are getting contracted. All her pelvic muscles are getting contracted. Now, the baby's head, try to understand, the baby's head is compressing the musculature in the pelvis. The pelvic diaphragm, see, imagine this is the, this is the baby's head. Now, the baby's head is actually compressing the pelvic diaphragm for too long time, too long time. So, what happens to the blood supply in the surrounding area? Now, all the blood vessels are constricted. So, the amount of blood supply to the pelvic diaphragm is compromised. There is very less blood flow coming. So, what happens? Now, these pelvic muscles, they might suffer with ischemic injury. So, they will become weak. So, prolonged labor as well as precipitate labor. Precipitate labor means delivery which is happening in within a very short time, within minutes, delivery is happening. So, even this is very much bad because it can also damage the pelvic floor muscles. Pelvic floor muscles can be damaged. So, both precipitate labor as well as prolonged labor both can act as a risk factor for uterine prolapse or genital prolapse. And connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome and Ehlers Danlos syndrome. In both the condition, in Marfan syndrome and Ehlers Danlos syndrome, connective tissues are defect. Even your, in your muscles also connective tissue is there. Ligaments example of connective tissue. So, connective tissue, whenever there is a defect, the pelvic musculature is going to be normal? Definitely not. Your muscles are going to be normal? Definitely not. Your ligaments are they going to be normal? Definitely not. So, in connective tissue disorders, again the pelvic musculature and the ligaments, they cannot give proper support for the uterus. So, whenever they cannot give the proper support, again uterus, uterine prolapse can happen. And heavy weight lifting after delivery, there was this one female who just got delivered the baby. Now, within a week, she is again going back to her work. Now, what she is doing is she is lifting more weights. Imagine that she is a typical uh, Indian woman from a village where she is going to work. Now, imagine she is going to lift up a very big weight. Now, whenever she increases her, like you know, whenever she tries to lift her weight, what happened to the pressure inside her abdomen? The pressure in the, in the abdomen is going to be increased. That will push, that pressure in the abdomen will push push the uterus down, will push the uh, uterus down into the vaginal canal. Why? Why? Because now she is, she have recently delivered a baby. Now all her pelvic musculature is very weak now. So increase in intra-abdominal pressure can push the uterus down into the vaginal canal or out of the vaginal canal. So uterine prolapse can happen or any condition, any condition which increases the intra-abdominal pressure like coughing. Okay, continuously she is coughing or uh, she might be suffering with constipation. Whenever she is const uh, constipated, she is going to increase her intra-abdominal pressure while she was going to go to stools. Now, any condition which increases the intra-abdominal pressure, like something like ascites, coughing, constipation, all these can be a risk factor for uterine prolapse or genital prolapse. And spina bifida. So, in spina bifida, what, what exactly is spina bifida? So, it is a neurological abnormality. So, the nerves, the pudendal nerve, which was supposed to go and inner, innervate the pelvic muscles, in the conditions of spina bifida, it won't happen. There is poor neurovascularity to the pelvic floor muscles. The pu uh, poor, poor neural innervation will happen. Poor neural innervation. So, the pelvic muscles are not able to go, in, are not going to contract properly. They are not going to maintain the tone properly. That can cause a risk of uterine prolapse. So, in this slide, I have clearly given you all the different, different conditions which can make pelvic prolapse to happen. So, close your eyes and think, close your eyes and think. Sir, if there is a fast labor or slow labor, both the conditions, pelvic prolapse can, can happen. Menopause, Weakens the pelvic diaphragm, uterine prolapse can happen. Traumatic deliveries. So, during delivery, damage to pelvic muscles, damage to ligaments can lead to uterine prolapse to happen. And Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome, connective tissue disorders, will cause 
you try and prolong so keep these points at least try to keep these points in your mind now what are the clinical features imagine that there are there was this one female now who is suffering with genital prolapse okay she actually what's happening is now her uterus her uterus now it is falling into her vaginal canal okay her vaginal canal uterus and cervix they are coming down into her vaginal canal now what are the chief complaints she is going to say to us see she is going to say like there, there is something which is coming out of my vagina sir doctor i feel like something is coming out of her vagina now what is that something it's nothing but the cervix and uterus it's nothing but the cervix and uterus which is falling down into her vaginal canal so this is one of the complaint now what else she can have she can have back pain why why because normally tell me guys now uterus uterus it is having three important ligaments anteriorly it is having pubo cervical ligament there are side side there are transverse ligaments or cardinal ligaments or mac and rods ligaments are present in the sides and posteriorly it have uterosacral ligaments normally uterus is supported by different different ligaments now whenever uterine prolapse is happening what happened to the surrounding ligaments now surrounding ligaments are now stretching unnecessarily the surrounding ligaments are stretching because uterus was displaced from its place uterus is coming and falling down into the vaginal canal the ligaments are being stretched when the ligaments are being stretched what will happen there will be pain okay there will be pain so there is groin pain or back pain due to stretching of ligaments especially uterosacral ligament now what else you can have sir whenever the uterus is falling down actually normally see later i will explain you later i will explain you there are different types of genital prolapse not only the uterine prolapse later i will explain you there is something called as cystocele where the bladder will fall there is something called as enterocele enterocele where the rectum is going to be prolapsed so whenever there is a cystocele bladder is coming out guys bladder will fall i will show you i will explain you how bladder is going to fall there is something called as a rectocele so whenever there is you uh, whenever there is cystocele and rectocele definitely do you think she is going to have her normal urination and normal defecation no definitely not it's not possible so she can have some difficulties with the urinating and defecating okay she have difficulties with the urination and defecation now what else can be said sir guys very important you can clearly see in this image the her uterus is coming out her uterus is coming out now you can clearly see there are some ulcers which are going to form on her uterus now what are these ulcers sir these ulcers are called as decubitus ulcers these ulcers are called as a decubitus ulcers and why there is this why, why there are these decubitus ulcers present now these decubitus ulcers are because of venous congestion decubitus ulcers are because of venous congestion now the uterus it is coming out it is coming out okay unnecessarily it is coming out do you think it is going to have her normal blood supply definitely blood supply is not going to be there blood definitely blood supply is compromised there is very less blood coming to the uterus okay whenever the uterus is falling down the amount of blood coming to the uterus is decreased so whenever the amount of blood coming to the uterus is decreased that is a venous congestion whenever venous congestion is happening what will happen it will cause ulcers it will cause ulcers no blood supply some area is getting damaged and venous ulcers are forming okay so these are the decubitus ulcers because of poor blood supply or venous congestion now what to do now how to treat this ulcer okay how to treat this ulcer this was a important exam question now how to treat this ulcers is see i am not talking about the management of the uterine prolapse right now i am not talking about the management of uterine prolapse i am talking about the management of these ulcers now what you can do is you can put acriflavin and glycerol packing you can take acriflavin and glycerol uh, glycerin okay and you can pack it into the uterus so what you are doing is you are putting the uterus back in the place okay uterus is coming falling down right with the hand with the hand you are taking you are taking the uterus and you are going to put it back in its place and inside the uterine cavity inside the uterine cavity you are totally packing it with gauze pieces gauze pieces which are dipped in acriflavin and glycerin okay so glycerin and acriflavin packing now please see here guys let, let me show you here this is the vaginal canal this is the vaginal canal here is the uterus what you have done 
you have just kept back the uterus back in its place you have kept back the, kept back the uterus in its place now what you have done you have dipped the gauze pieces in acriflavin and glycerin so entirely you have packed the uterus you have packed the uterus so that what what you have actually done for some time you just put back the uterus in its place now what will happen blood supply will become normal or not blood supply is normal sir so what you are doing you are restoring the blood flow so that will heal the ulcers that will heal the ulcers you are also giving the antibiotic acriflavin so that will heal the ulcers okay now after seeing the clinical symptoms now let's talk about something called as congenital prolapse what is congenital prolapse guys okay what is congenital prolapse see prolapse seen in a young nulliparous female come on guys a prolapse which is seen in a young nulliparous female now prolapse is happening in a 10 year old female or 12 year old female normally sir menopause is the risk factor for prolapse in menopause all the pelvic diaphragm is weakened so prolapse can happen but now see prolapse is happening in a very young female at a 12 years old female or a 10 years old female now this type of prolapse is called as congenital prolapse why it might happen sir why it might happen might be she is suffering with connective tissue disorders like a hellers danlos syndrome or marfan syndrome now in this young female in this young female because of connective tissue disorders prolapse is happening okay so what are the risk factors risk factors like connective tissue disorders like hellers danlos syndrome osteogenesis imperfecta spina bifida or uh, marfan syndrome okay already we have discussed if the female is suffering with spina bifida the tone the tone of the pelvic floor is not good why because the pudendal nerve is damaged in spina bifida the pudendal nerve which was supposed to come and innervate the pelvic diaphragm is not coming and it's not properly innervating so the pelvic diaphragm is very very weak if it is very weak uterine prolapse can happen okay so congenital prolapse is going to be seen in a young nulliparous female very young 10 years 12 years she haven't delivered a baby but still her uterus is coming out falling down now what to do now what to do in such kind of conditions the management of congenital prolapse now our condition is congenital prolapse or or she is everything everything is normal okay normal female she is not having any connective tissue disorder she is not having marfan syndrome she is not having a hellers danlos no osteogenesis imperfecta or no spina bifida normal but because of some reason she is having uterine prolapse because of some reason she is having uterine prolapse now you are going to ask a question does this female want to have pregnancy in the future or not definitely she is a nulliparous female guys definitely she want to have a baby in her future so she is desiring future pregnancy no doubt so now what kind of surgeries we are going to do how we are going to manage a prolapse in a young female who is desiring a future pregnancy now what we can do the surgery which i am going to do is called as a sling surgery see here what i am showing you is a sling which is nothing but a tape tape mercilin tape now what is this what is this doing it is simply holding the uterus in its place normally what is the problem uterus is falling down sir uterus is falling down like this uterus is falling down like this now what i am going to do i am going to take this tape and i am going to put back the uterus in its normal place and this sling this tape is actually holding the uterus imagine this is the uterus imagine this is the uterus which is getting prolapsed now my fingers are acting like slings or mercilin tape now uterus is hold in the place with the help of the slings so this is called as a sling surgery so sling is nothing but an instrument which is going to hold the uterus preventing the uterine prolapse preventing the uterine prolapse so what i am showing you here is a mercilin tape or sling so just tell me guys what is the management of congenital prolapse the management is sling surgery or cervicopexy cervicopexy or sling surgery they are one and the same so how many types of this sling, sling surgeries are there sir now there are different types of sling surgeries and all the sling surgeries are done with the help of a sling called as a mercilin tape mercilin tape now first type let's see anterior sling surgery what do they mean by anterior sling surgery now anterior sling surgery means now see imagine this is the uterus this this is sling on one side definitely it have to hold the uterus on one side definitely it have to hold the uterus on the other side this sling is going to come to the anterior abdominal wall and it is stitched there 
So, anterior sling surgeries means the sling on one side is going to be attached to the uterus and the other side it is attached to anterior abdominal wall. Posterior sling surgery means the sling on one side it is attached to uterus and the other side of the sling is going back and attaching to the posterior abdominal wall. So, anterior sling surgeries, posterior sling surgeries. Anyway, the slings are the ones which are holding the uterus in its place, preventing the prolapse, preventing the prolapse. Okay. Now, what are the examples of anterior sling, sir? The two important examples of anterior sling, sir, sir, Purandare sling and Kanna sling. So, Purandare sling and Kanna sling, they are the anterior sling surgeries, they are the anterior slings. Now, see, Purandare sling, anterior sling. On one side, it is attached to uterus. On the other, other side, where it is getting attached, guys? Anteriorly, where? To the rectus fascia. We all have this rectus fascia, right? Rectus muscle, rectus abdominis. There is rectus fascia, right? So, on one side, to the uterus. Other side, to the rectus fascia. Holding the uterus. Preventing the prolapse. And Kanna sling. Kanna sling, this sling is going to, again, attach one side to the uterus. Other side, to the anterior superior iliac spine. Definitely, we have anterior superior iliac spine. The bony point, brony prominence. So, sling is going to attach on one side to the uterus. Other side, to the anterior superior iliac spine. So, these are the anterior sling surgeries. Anterior sling surgeries. Now, what is the example of posterior sling? Shirodkar sling. So, Shirodkar sling is an example of posterior sling. So, one side to the uterus. Other side to the posterior side. Where is our posterior side? To the... Sir, uh, to the uh, sacral ligaments, I will show you, don't worry. On one side to the uterus, posteriorly to the sacral promontory, posteriorly back to the sacral promontory and sacral ligaments. I will show you. But some important points which, need, which you need to keep in mind for your exam. What are the exam questions, sir? Sir, Kanna sling, it is associated with which side effects? It is associated with osteitis. Why osteitis? Why? Because Kanna sling is an example of which sling, sir? Anterior sling. Kanna sling, the sling on one side is attached to the uterus, on the other side it is attached to the bony prominence that is anterior superior relaxed spine. So, anterior superior relaxed spine, the bone right, while you are putting a sling there, while you are attaching a sling there, what will happen? Bone might get affected, so osteitis will happen. So, osteitis is seen in which type of sling surgeries? Anterior sling surgeries. Anterior sling surgeries or just sling surgeries are going to be done in a female who wants future pregnancy or who doesn't want future pregnancy. Sir, sling surgeries are the options in those females who are desiring future pregnancies. Sling surgeries are the treatment of choice or the surgery of choice in a condition called as congenital prolapse. In young females who are desiring the pregnancy, there the surgery we are going to do is a sling surgery with a mercillin tape. Anterior slings, posterior slings. Now, Purandare sling is an example of dynamic sling, but Kanna sling is an example of static sling. What is this, sir? See, first let me show you the side view. Okay, the side view, the side view. I am just showing you from the side, side. Here is the uterus. Okay, let me uh, show you something like this. Here is the uterus, cervix, down, there is vaginal canal. There is a vaginal canal and here is the pubis. Okay, imagine here is the pubis. Now, let me talk to you about the Purandare sling. I am talking to you about the Purandare sling. Purandare sling, on one side, it is going to attach to the uterus. On the other side, it will go and attach where? Sir, Purandare sling, it is going to attach under the rectus fascia. Now, rectus fascia, is it a one single point or rectus fascia? It is like a big fascia, right? It is not a one single prominent point. It is a big fascia. So, on one slide, on one side sling, it, sling is attached to the uterus, on the other slide sling can attach anywhere onto the, it can attach anywhere onto the rectus fascia. So, anywhere, not one single point, it can attach any, you can attach anywhere onto the rectus fascia. So, it is an example of dynamic, means it will move, okay, it, you can attach anywhere. But, but when I am talking about the Kanna sling, see, Kanna sling, it is an example of static sling, why? Because, see, Kanna sling is going to attach one side to the uterus. On the other side, to a one single prominent area called as anterior superior iliac spine. So, anterior superior iliac spine is not like a rectus fascia. It is a one single prominent bony point. So, anterior superior iliac spine is a one single point. So, we are calling the Kanna sling as a static sling. Static sling. Understood? So, close your eyes and tell me. Sir, what are the problems? What are the problems which are associated with the Kanna sling? It is attached to the anterior superior leg spine, so causes osteitis. Kanna sling is an example of 
static sling but purandara sling anterior uh, anterior uh, anterior sling which will be an example of dynamic sling dynamic sling now see anterior sling surgeries have very less complications when compared to posterior sling surgeries when i am discussing about the shirodhkar sling see when i am discussing about the shirodhkar sling later i will explain you there are lot of complications but anterior sling surgeries they have less complications but the success rate is also very less the success rate is very less which means uh, even after the sling surgeries there can be a possibility of prolapse okay now for performing sling surgery what is must and should what is the mandatory sir? the mandatory point is the utero cervical length see the ratio of the uterus and the cervix the length of the uterine body and the length of the cervix it should be in a normal range it should be in a normal range okay it sh there should not be any disproportion this is a very important point which you need to know the utero sacral length should be normal should be normal then only you can perform this sling surgeries so what is this utero cervical length we will discuss don't worry so what i am saying what is the mandatory point for the sling surgeries utero cervical length should be normal now after this let's see important points about shirodhkar sling guys shirodhkar sling now shirodhkar sling is an example of anterior sling or posterior sling sir posterior sling posterior sling previously just before 5 minutes i have explained to you posterior sling surgeries they have a lot of complications they have a lot of complications now in this image i can clearly show you now you will get a clarity sir what i am showing you a cross section cross section at the level of pelvis okay i am just showing you the cross section at the level of pelvis now in the middle here you can see the cervix you can see the cervix or just take it as a uterus just take it as a uterus this is the anterior abdominal wall with the rectus muscles this is the anterior abdominal wall okay and this is the posterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall posterior abdominal wall in the middle i'm just showing you the uterus okay at the level of cervix i'm just showing you at the level of cervix the cross section has happened at the level of cervix now what we are doing in shirodhkar sling in shirodhkar sling please concentrate the sling see here the sling was one side attached on one side the sling was attached to uterus the sling was attached to one side to the uterus and the sling it's coming back 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 and it's coming where it's coming and attaching to the sacral promontory so the sling the meslin tape on one side attached to the uterus and the sling is coming like this and it's getting attached onto the sacral promontory and you understood so where we are attaching the sling are we attaching the sling anteriorly or posteriorly we are attaching the sling posteriorly so this sling is an example of posterior sling and it's also an example of static sling why right? because sacral promontory is one single prominence it's one single area it's not like a rectus fascia so it is an example of static sling static sling okay now one end is attached to the uterus one end is attached to the uterus and the other end is attached to the sacral promontory now normally normal think logically and tell me sir what is the ligament which is attaching the uterus and sacrum utero sacral ligament previously we have discussed the three important ligaments sir anteriorly there is pubo cervical transverse ligament is there the second ligament is transverse ligament or the cardinal ligament posteriorly what do we have posteriorly we have utero sacral ligament utero sacral ligament right now our shirodhkar sling it is mimicking what the shirodhkar sling it is attaching one end to the uterus and it is the second end the other end is attaching to the sacral promontory so this sling mimics the utero sacral ligament its sling mimics the utero sacral ligament okay completed so posterior sling also completed now important point is guys see what are the complications which are going to be seen with the posterior sling especially on the left side please concentrate guys on the left side of the body are you able to appreciate there is this one structure which is present which i have noted with the sc that's nothing called as sigmoid colon that's nothing but sigmoid colon and also there is this one green color point which is there which is nothing but a genitofemoral nerve so while you are taking the sling posteriorly especially on left side especially on left side while you are trying to knot the sling to the sacral promontory you may damage so during the surgery you may damage genitofemoral nerve or you may also damage the bowels the sigmoid colon so what are the important points the complications 
during the sirodkar sling surgery or the posterior sling surgery is going to be most commonly seen on left side of the body what are the complications you might end up damaging the sigmoid colon or you might end up damaging the genitofemoral nerve and even ureters are also there here so the mesenteric blood vessels and the ureters ureters and the blood vessels which are supplying the mesentery the blood vessels which are supplying the mesenteries can be damaged so what i am trying to put into your mind is posterior sling surgeries have a lot of complications but the success rate is very good posterior sling surgeries especially on left side have a lot of complications because there is sigmoid colon on the left side there is genito femoral nerve going so they might damage leading to complications okay clear guys now after discussing about the management now let's talk about one important sling surgery okay one important sling surgery which is called as composite sling surgery or virkut sling composite sling surgery or virkut sling now what is happening in this composite sling see we know the anterior sling surgeries are very easy there are no complications but little success rate is there but posterior sling surgeries posterior sling surgeries they are having very good success rate but complications are there so now what i am going to do on the left side on the left side i am not going to put the posterior sling i am not going to put the posterior sling on the left side what i am doing see here please concentrate guys i am going to put shirodkar sling i am going to put the shirodkar sling only on the right side okay only on the right side which means i am attaching the uterus on one side with the sling which is going and attaching to the sacral promontory on the right side but on the left side what i am doing sir please concentrate on to the rectus fascia on to the rectus fascia sling is coming rectus fascia again the sling is coming and getting attached to the uterus so on one side i am keeping anterior sling and on the other side right side i am keeping posterior sling so it's a combination of anterior sling surgery as well as posterior sling surgery this is called as composite sling or virkut sling composite sling or virkut sling where on right side of the body i am putting the shirodkar sling on the left side of the body i am putting anterior sling which is nothing but the purandara sling why because purandara sling is going to attach to the rectus fascia so this is better this is going to have a better yield better success rates so this is composite sling now after understanding the composite composite sling okay we have done with the composite slings and don't ever forget sir so the sling surgeries are the surgeries we are going to do in a female who have congenital prolapse sling surgeries are going to be done in those females who are desiring future pregnancies now after that let's talk about one more important clinical scenario where right now prolapse has happened in a female prolapse has happened in a female now this female is not having any desire of future child there is no desire of future child but she is not willing to go for hysterectomy normally see simple whenever uterus prolapse uterus prolapse usually what we do usually what we do is are uterus is prolapsing down if there is no use of uterus in her body for example she don't want to have any baby now what usually we will do is we will do hysterectomy we will we will take out the uterus from the body we will take out the uterus from this female that is called as hysterectomy but this female who doesn't want any future child but she is also not willing to go for the hysterectomy she doesn't want hysterectomy what she is saying is doctor i want my uterus to be in my body i want to have normal menstrual cycles so please don't take out my uterus i might be mentally affected so psychologically she she is 100% sure she wants to have her menstrual cycles in her body she wants to have her uterus in her body now what to do sir in such females who is not desiring future pregnancies what kind of surgeries are more better in her you see the surgery which we are going to do is father gills or manchester surgery okay father gills manchester surgery is a surgery which is going to be done in females is going to be done in females who are not desiring the future pregnancy now what we are doing in this father gills manchester surgery sir previously previously in, in father gills manchester surgery there is cervical amputation okay doctor is going to perform the cervical amputation and along with that cervical amputation there is plication of cardinal ligaments plication of cardinal ligaments now what actually we are doing in the, the father gills manchester surgery i will explain you see now this is the uterus here is the uterus now here is the vagina here is the vagina sir now i am going to show you cervix this is the area of cervix 
the supravaginal part of the cervix. This is the supravaginal part of the cervix. Now, what we are doing in the Fothergill's Manchester surgery is we are amputating this part of the cervix. We are amputating this part of the cervix. We are going to amputate that part of the cervix. So, what will happen whenever you do amputation? Definitely, there is going to be inflammation. That inflammation heals by scar formation. So, what happens here is scar tissue is going to form. Scar tissue is going to form. Now, the scar tissue is actually acting as a barrier. Scar, fibrous tissue, that fibrous scar, that tissue is going to act as a barrier. It will now prevent the uterus to fall down. Now, see, uterus, it cannot come down into the vaginal canal. So, supravaginal cervical amputation. See, supravaginal part of the cervix. Supravaginal part of the cervix. Whenever you cut down that cervix, now it will there, there will be... Uh, there will be fibrosis going to happen there, scar tissue is going to happen there. So, that will prevent the uterine prolapse, which is not that good. These days, we are not doing this part. We are not doing this part. Now, what we are doing is only plication of the cardinal ligaments. Plication of the cardinal ligaments. Now, what is this plication of the cardinal ligaments? Guys, let me show you in the cross section. Here, I am showing you. See, normally, I am showing you the uterus in the center. Okay, let me show uterus in the center. Here is the uterus. Uterus. Normally, uterus is supported by how many ligaments? Three ligaments. Are the tri triradiate ligament. Three ligaments. Anterior ligament is pubo cervical ligament from the pubis to the cervix. The pubo cervical ligament. The second ligament, the powerful ligament, most powerful ligament, is the transverse ligament or the cardinal ligament. The transverse ligament, cardinal ligament, or McEnrod ligament are all the one and the same. These blue color ligaments. They are present transversely, sideways. And the last ligament, which is also powerful. The last ligament is coming from the uterus and it is attaching the uterus to the sacrum posteriorly, sacrum posteriorly, the uterosacral ligaments. So, what I am trying to put in your mind is actually posteriorly good support is there. Posteriorly there is good support. The uterosacral ligaments are the strong ligaments. And even these blue color ligaments or the transverse ligaments are also again good ligaments. They will give good support. But anteriorly pubocervical ligaments are there, right? They are not that good support. They are not that good supports. So, there is good support. Posteriorly, but anteriorly, the support is not that good. So, what we are doing is, we are going to take up, we are going to take up these ligaments. We are going to take up these cardinal ligaments. We are going to cut them here. We are going to cut them here. And we will try to bring those cardinal ligaments and try to attach it to the anterior abdominal wall. We are going to attach them to the anterior side. Now, what is happening? Posteriorly, there is very good support. And anteriorly also, there is very good support. So now uterus is hold on both the sides with good supports. Posteriorly uterosacral ligaments, anteriorly the cardinal ligaments or McEnrod ligaments are supporting. So this is what is called as the plication of the cardinal ligament. So what I am saying, sir, in Fothergill's Manchester surgery, previously we used to do two things. What are they? Cervical amputation, cervical amputation along with the plication of the cardinal ligament, plication of the cardinal ligament. Repeating, repeating, this Fothergill's Manchester surgery is going to be done in only those females who doesn't want pregnancy? Why? Because if you, if a female is undergoing this kind of surgery, if a female is undergoing this kind of surgery, she cannot have babies in her future. Why? Why? Because what we have done? We have done supravaginal cervical amputation. The supravaginal part, the cervix, this part of the cervix is totally cut down. Now we have taken out the cervix. Now what will happen whenever you take out the cervix? There is a chance that, there is a chance that stenosis will happen. There is a chance that Stenosis will happen. So, okay, cervix is stenosed. Now, she cannot have pregnancy. She cannot have pregnancy. The chances are going to be very, very less. So, so that's the reason why these days, actually we are avoiding, we are actually avoiding the cervical amputation. We are only going with the application of the cardinal ligament. So, these days, okay, these days what we are doing? We are doing a surgery where there is a little modification. Where there is a little modification. What is that uh, mo modification called as? See, it's called as a Sirodkar's modification of Fothergill's Manchester surgery. Sirodkar's modification of Fothergill's Manchester surgery. What is this modification? Now, we are only plicating, we are only plicating the cardinal ligaments. We are only plicating the cardinal ligaments and cervical amputation is not performed. Cervical amputation is not performed. So, this is called as Sirodkar's modification of Fothergill Manchester surgery. Okay, now, after this, you guys have to answer. Guys, you have to answer. Now, tell me. Here, I am showing you different, different scenarios. Different, different age group females. Different, different conditions. Now, you have to tell me. Think logically and tell me. 
what is the management that you are going to do whether you are going to do the sling surgery or whether you are going to do father gills manchester operation now see guys i am taking one young female a 10 year old female or 12 year old or 16 year old, year old female now she is having a problem of congenital prolapse what are the reasons of congenital prolapse connective tissue disorders like marfan syndrome ehlers danlos syndrome osteogenesis imperfecta or spina bifida okay anyway she is having uterine prolapse her uterus is falling down into the vaginal canal now does she does she want to have future pregnancy or not definitely she want to have future pregnancy now her utero cervical length also you have measured her utero cervical length and it is also coming normal now tell me what is the management you are going to do now in this condition female desiring the future pregnancy her utero cervical length is normal now what is the surgery you are going to do just tell me guys come on mohammad mohammad anu osama sanyasi pandit come on guys what are the surgery you are going to do what is the surgery that you are going to do is it sling surgery or is it father gills manchester operation is it sling surgery or father gills manchester operation in the first condition sir young who is desiring the pregnancy if she is desiring the pregnancy come on mohammad try to answer the young female who is desiring the pregnancy always sling surgery always sling surgery you have to do the sling surgery okay you have to do the sling surgery now there was this one female who is in her reproductive age now she is in 25 years or 20 years now she is in reproductive age now she also want to have future pregnancy no doubt and her utero cervical length is also normal now whenever she desire pregnancies in her future and also the utero cervical length is normal again what you can do again sling surgery sir sling surgery either anterior sling surgeries or posterior sling surgeries depends on on her condition anterior sling surgery is purandare sling kanna sling posterior sling surgery is shirodkar sling or you can do a composite sling called as virkut sling now next condition is a reproductive age group female okay she is in 30 she is in her 30s and she is not willing to have any her pregnancy i don't want any pregnancy sir my family is completed i don't want to have any 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 future pregnancies she is clearly saying and her utero sacral length is increased now what to do now whenever utero sacral length is increased whenever the utero sacral length is increased definitely there is no possibility for sling surgeries so first of all she is not desiring for any pregnancy and her utero sacral length is also increased because of the uterine prolapse because of the uterine prolapse the cervix is so much stressed and uterus is so much stretched her utero sacral lengths are not normal so now what you have to do father gills or manchester surgery father gills manchester surgery you can go with and one more condition reproductive age group female who is desiring the pregnancy okay she is willing to have the pregnancy okay now she is in her 20s utero uterine uterine prolapse have happened uterine prolapse have happened now she is desiring the pregnancy but utero cervical length is increased now what to do sir okay normally if she is desiring the pregnancy what we have to do is sling surgery what we have to do is the sling surgery but here you cannot do the sling surgery here you have you cannot do the sling surgery because utero sacral length is increased utero sacral length is increased so what is not possible sling surgery is not possible so you have to go with father gills manchester surgery so here i have given you a lot of in the four different clinical scenarios okay four different clinical scenarios and four four different clinical clinical scenarios and their managements okay now let's take a break of one minute and let's continue other clinical conditions other different types of genital prolapse okay we'll see different types of clinical cases and what are the managements what are the surgeries which you are going to do let's take a break of one minute guys see you in one minute
Okay, guys, let's continue. Now, I'm going to take up a different clinical case. Now, right, right now, this uterine prolapse is happening in an elderly female. Okay, now uterine prolapse is happening in whom? In an elderly female. Now, this elderly female, now she is in her 40s or she is in her 50s. Now, she doesn't want to have any future pregnancy. Now, she is elder female, right? She is elder. She doesn't want any, she doesn't want to have any pregnancy now. Her family is completed. Now, in elderly female who is not willing to have any pregnancy and she doesn't want to have her normal menstrual function also. See, it's very simple. Now, this case is very simple. Now, she is elder. She don't want to have her ba any babies. And now, she is very, very much willing. She is very much willing to go with the hysterectomy. Now, the previous case, in the previous case, the female, yes, she doesn't want to have any pregnancy, but she don't want to go for the hysterectomy. She want her uterus. She want to have intact uterus in her body. Psychologically, she is fixed that, okay, I don't want to remove my uterus. Okay, she is feeling like, so because of this uterus, I am like, you know, I am feeling myself as a female. That's the previous case. Right now, it's very clear. Now, she is 50 years old and she is coming to the clinic with a complaint of uterus cervical prolapse. Okay, uterus cervical prolapse is there. And she is saying, I don't want to have any future pregnancy. Now you can do whatever the operation you want to do. Now in this elderly females who doesn't want any future pregnancy and who are ready to go undergo hysterectomy, what we will do? Simple hysterectomy. We are going to go with the hysterectomy. So in these females who are who is not desiring any future pregnancies, we are going to do vaginal hysterectomy. What myo vaginal hysterectomy? Okay, you can do hysterectomy either via vaginal route or via or via like abdominal root, abdominal hysterectomy or vaginal hysterectomy. Now, in these conditions, in these females, we are going to do a type of vaginal hysterectomy called as ward myo vaginal hysterectomy. What are we doing in this ward myo vaginal hysterectomy? We are going to do first, it includes this ward myo vaginal hysterectomy, it includes first thing vaginal hysterectomy, removing the uterus, removing the uterus via vaginal root, okay, through the vaginal root, okay, you are entering into the pelvic, you are entering into the pelvis into the through the vaginal root and you are taking out the uterus via vagina through the vagina that is vaginal hysterectomy also along with the vaginal hysterectomy after doing vaginal hysterectomy you are repairing the pelvic floor okay you are repairing the pelvic floor all the pelvic floor you are repairing and also you are doing sacrospinous scalpopexy now what is this sacrospinous scalpopexy in a minute i will discuss with you in a minute i will discuss with you but what right now in this clinical case what are we going to do? So, in a clinical case where a female is elder who is not willing to have future pregnancy, okay, who is not willing to have future pregnancy and she is ready for the surgery. Okay, there are no complications for the surgery. There are no contraindications for the surgery. Now, in this female, what we are going to do is a ward myo hysterectomy, which includes the removal of the uterus through the vaginal root along with the pelvic floor repair plus sacrospinous scalpopexy. Sacrospinous scalpopexy. Okay. Now, after this, Let's talk about the same condition with little complication. Same condition. Our female is the elderly female. She doesn't want to have any future pregnancy. She doesn't want to have any future pregnancy. Now she is saying that, okay, doctor, I am ready for the surgery. But you have identified now this female is the not suitable to go for the surgery, which means she is having some contraindications. Now she is having some contraindications for the surgery. Okay, now she is having some contraindications for the surgery or, or this female is saying, doctor, right now I don't want to go with any surgery. She is saying, she is fearing and she is saying, doctor, I, want, I don't want to go with any surgery. Right now, our female, our female is having contraindications for the surgery or refusing to go for the surgery. Now what to do? Now what to do? In those females where surgery is not an option, in those females where surgery is not an option, even young female also, even in young female, for example, a 25-year-old, a 30-year-old, now she is having uterocervical prolapse. And in that female, for example, there are some complications. There are some, some complications because of which she is not supposed to go for the surgery. Now, in these females, what we have to do? Now, the option is ring pessary. Okay, the treatment option is going to be the ring pessary. So, ring. See, we are going to keep a ring. See, this is called the ring pessary. Where we are going to keep this ring at the level of? ischial spines okay at the level of ischial spine now how this ring pessary is going to be helpful sir how this ring pessary see here is the uterus here is the uterus here is the vagina now what we are going to do 
Now we are going to put back the uterus and cervix in its normal place. Okay, we are going to put the uterus and cervix in its normal original position and we are going to insert a ring over here. Okay, this ring, we are going to insert a ring over here. Now this ring is acting as a mechanical barrier. Now this ring is acting as a mechanical support. Okay, so that uterus and cervix is not falling down. So this ring is holding the uterus and cervix in its place. Okay. So ring pessary, ring pessary is going to be kept at the level of ischial spines. An important point is that guys, this is not a permanent cure. If you remove the ring, if you remove this ring pessary, if you remove this ring pessary, again uterocervical prolapse will occur. So this ring pessary is the not a permanent cure and you have to take out this ring pessary every three months. Okay, you should not keep this ring pessary continuously even after three months. You have to replace, you have to take it out. Why? For example, there was this one female who had this ring pessary and she totally forgot about it. Okay, you actually ask this female to come after two months or three months for the review. But she is not coming. She is having that ring pessary and it's holding the uterus and cervix. But she is not coming to the clinic. Now in these females, if she is using this ring pessary continuously, even after three months, it will cause certain complications like vesicovaginal fistulas. Okay, if she forgets about it, okay, this ring pessary was placed in the uh, placed in the uh, vagina and you forget about it and she is also forget about it she got forget about it now she is going to develop complications like vesico vaginal fistulas unnecessary complications these are okay now when you are going to go with this ring pessaries ring pessaries are the like you know, ring pessaries an indication in conditions like when a female is not suitable for surgery they are the female is refusing the surgery now in these two conditions ring pessaries are the treatment option Okay, ring pessaries are the treatment option. Now, not only in these places, rings, these ring pessaries should be used if there is a prolapse, for example. If there is a prolapse immediately after delivery, okay, immediately after delivery or during pregnancy. See, during pregnancy, now imagine that there was this one female who is in her seventh month. Now, she is having seven months pregnancy or six months pregnancy, eight months pregnancy. So during pregnancy, with the pregnancy, with the baby inside the uterus, uterus is falling down. With the baby inside the uterus, uterus is falling down into the vagina. Now what we have to do? Are you supposed to put the, are you supposed to do sling surgery? Are you going to do sling surgery? Are you going to do ward myo hysterectomy? Or are you going to do father gills Manchester surgery? Or ring pessary? Sir, ring pessary is the surgery of choice in a female who is a pregnant and had utero cervical prolapse and during purperium purperium means after delivery after delivery after delivery now two days back or three days back she have delivered the baby right now she is suffering with prolapse we have we have discussed we have discussed after delivery the pelvic floor muscles are weakened after delivery the pelvic floor muscles are weakened there is a possibility of utero cervical prolapse so in her purperium if she is having utero cervical prolapse what is the treatment? What, what, what you are going to do? Keep ring pessary. Keep ring pessary. Okay. And old female who is having contraindication to surgeries, anesthesia. Okay. She is not, she is not going to tolerate the anesthesia. So surgery is not possible. If surgery is not possible, the only option what we can go with is the ring pessary. Okay. Now after this, let's talk about, let's talk about some other clinical case, other clinical scenario where our female have contraindication to surgery. Our female have contraindication to surgery or refusing the surgery. Our female right now in this condition is an old female. Guys, please be very much attentive. Please be very much attentive. Previously, what I have discussed in the previous slide, a female, a female who is having contraindication to surgery, a female who is having contraindication to surgery, somewhere around 30 years, 40 years in her reproductive age. So during pregnancy or after uh, during pregnancy or during purperium, during pregnancy, during purperium or that female who is having contraindication to surgery who is a young female. So what we are doing there? Ring pessary, we are keeping ring pessary. Also we have kept ring pessary. See guys, please concentrate. We have used ring pessary in old female also. See old female who is having contraindication to surgery. Ring pessary is used. But right now, right now, what I am showing you is, sir, female, now she is also having contraindication to surgery or she is refusing the surgery. Again, she is 
65 years old again she is 65 years old now what we are going to do so we are going to manage this female with the lefort calpoclysis okay lefort calpoclysis calpo means vagina calpo means vagina clysis means we are scraping we are scraping so what exactly we are going to do see see here i will show you okay you won't don't you there won't be any any confusion see here is the cervix here is the cervix and here is the vagina okay now what i am going to do in this old female who is having contraindication to surgery or refusing to go for the surgery now what we are going to do see i am going to scrape this vaginal walls i am going to scrape this vaginal walls okay i am going to scrape okay just like like you know you, with the tongue cleaner you will scrape your tongue right so you, just like that i am going to scrape the vaginal walls so whenever i have done this scraping it will cause what so the scraping will cause inflammation and the scraping is going to cause adhesion okay fibrous tissue is going to form later this inflammation is going to heal by fibrous tissue formation fibrous tissue is going to form here now this fibrous tissue and scar tissue it is acting as a barrier so it, this the scar tissue in the vaginal canal in her vaginal canal there is there is there is no cavity the entire vaginal canal is filled with the fibrous strands now do you think the uterus will come out do you think that uterus will fall down no uterus is not going to fall down so adhesions are created in vagina by scraping the vaginal wall so uterus cannot descend down okay uterus cannot descend down okay so this is what is the treatment we are going to do this is what the treatment we are going to do in a old female old female who is having contraindication to surgery or refusing the surgery okay but remember when they mention a old female who is having contraindication to anesthesia now if they mention this word contraindication to anesthesia then she have to go with the ring pessary so close your eyes and tell me what are the indications for ring pessary sir the indications for ring pessary are normal young female who is having contraindication to surgery for example like she is having she might be having uh, some kind of heart issue okay she might be, she might be having some kind of heart related issue she is not going to suppose she was not supposed to go for the surgery so young female who is having contraindication to for the surgery are refusing to go for the surgery ring pessary during pregnancy prolapse ring surgery during puerperium pro prolapse ring surgery old female who is having contraindication to anesthesia ring pessary ring pessary okay so these are the indications which you need to know now after this let's talk something about vault prolapse guys vault prolapse now what is the vault sir which vault which vault see let me show you what exactly i mean by vault prolapse normally a female is there now she have suffered with she have suffered with uterine prolapse her problem is uterine prolapse uterus is falling down uterus uterus and cervix they are falling down into the cervical canal no doubt now what you have done you have done the surgery you have done the hysterectomy you have removed her uterus you have removed her uterus now what is left over sir now she is only having what sir now she is only having vagina okay now she is only normally this is how it should be normally she was supposed to have uterus like this and vagina down vaginal canal it should be something like this now what you have done sir you have removed the uterus so what she is left with is only vagina you have sutured the vaginal wall here so this area is called as a vault or the stump stump area the vault area so you know what will happen now this vault area is weak this vault area is weak so what will happen is this vault area will again prolapse down so this is how it's going to happen see the vault area will also prolapse down it's very weak so it is now prolapsing down so this is called as a vault prolapse or vault prolapse now to this vault prolapse what kind of surgeries are possible are you going to do ward myo hysterectomy no why because hysterectomy is already done are you going to do sling surgery are you going to do father gills manchester operation or are you going to keep a ring pessary or are you going to do lefort calpoclysis what you are going to do now whenever there is vault prolapse if they are mentioning the word vault prolapse there are three surgeries possible you can do three surgeries what are they mesh sacral calpopexy i will i will show you don't worry in, in in detail i will show you mesh sacral calpopexy utero sacral suspension okay utero sacral suspension and sacrospinous fixation so mesh sacral calpopexy utero sacral suspension 
and sacrospinous fixation or the surgeries which can be done for vault prolapse vault prolapse now you will get you, you you might be like you know little confusion you might be having some little confusion so what are these surgeries how they are going to be helpful now i will show you okay now i will show you see here sir in this image i can i'm just what, what's the problem in this image what's the problem very clearly see there is a no uterus here uterus was supposed to be there but there is no uterus there what is left over is only the vaginal vault what is left over is the vaginal vault now this vaginal vault is at a risk of undergoing prolapse it will undergo prolapse it will come out it will come out actually these are the videos which i placed here to uh, to show you the animations but unfortunately i all these animations are like not playing here now in the future classes in the next class if possible i will try to play those animations also okay anyway let's talk about the three important surgeries which are going to be done for the vault prolapse the first surgery is mesh sacral calpopexy wherever you see the word calpo calpo means vagina so mesh by using a mesh see here we are using a mesh and this mesh is attached to the vaginal vault okay this mesh is attached to the vaginal vault and this mesh is going where it is going and attaching to the sacrum so with using mesh i am attaching the vaginal vault calpo to the sacrum so mesh sacral calpopexy is a treatment for vault prolapse now the what is the second surgery what we can do is uterosacral ligament suspension uterosacral ligaments guys see this is a uterosacral ligament which is present over here we have discussed three important ligaments triradiate ligaments pubo cervical ligaments transverse ligaments are the cardinal ligaments uterosacral ligaments now what we are doing sir we are attaching we are actually see what we are doing is see we are tying knots okay we are suturing we are, we are suturing the vault of the vagina we are suturing the vault of the vagina to the to the uterosacral ligaments see here uterosacral ligaments uterosacral ligaments are sutured to the vaginal vault so now do you think vaginal vault is going to prolapse down no no prolapse so this is called as the uterosacral ligaments suspension we are suspending the ligament we are suspending the uterine uh, the vaginal vault to the uterosacral ligaments and the third condition which i am going to discuss is the sacrospinous fixation there is one more important ligament present over here sacrospinous ligament sacrospinous ligament we are attaching the vaginal vault okay we are suturing the vaginal vault to the sacrospinous ligament so this is called as sacrospinous fixation sacrospinous fixation now just close your eyes and tell me sir vault prolapse how we are managing sir vault prolapse is going to be managed with sacrospinous fixation uterosacral ligament suspension as well as mesh sacral calpopexy three different surgeries can be done three different surgeries can be done okay now i am going to ask you certain like you know certain scenarios you have to answer yourself you have to answer yourself just immediately you have to answer just like that see first scenario first scenario a female who is 10 years old or 12 years old or 13 years old very young female now she had a uterine prolapse which is called as a congenital prolapse now she had congenital uterine prolapse now what to do in the conditions of congenital uh, vault prolapse okay sir not vault prolapse in the, in the conditions of congenital prolapse what is the surgery that you are going to do the surgery is the surgery is sling surgery sling surgery okay congenital prolapse the surgery you are going to do is sling surgery now second there is this young female who is 17 years old or 18 years old now she is desiring future pregnancy now in her what you have to do whenever she desires future pregnancy again again what you have to do is sling surgery the sling surgeries are how many types anterior sling surgeries posterior sling surgeries what are the examples of anterior sling surgeries purandara sling karna sling what is the example of posterior sling surgery shirodhkar sling now third clinical scenario sir a patient who is desiring to have menstruation future menstruation but she doesn't want to have any future pregnancy simple a female who is desiring to have menstrual cycles normal menstrual cycles and she doesn't want to have any babies in the future now clearly hysterectomy is out of option okay she want to have her uterus she want to have her menstruation now in this female now if this female who is suffering with utero cervical prolapse she has she is suffering with utero cervical prolapse she want to have her uterus in her body now what to do now what to do is 
Fother Gills Manchester operation. Fother Gills Manchester operation. In Fother Gills Manchester operation, what are the steps involved? In Fother Gills Manchester operation, sir, the steps involved are cervical amputation, cervical amputation along with plication of cardinal ligaments. Okay, clear. Now, other clinical scenario. Elderly female, sir. Elderly female. Okay, elderly female. Now, she doesn't want to have any future pregnancy. She doesn't want to have any future pregnancy. Okay. And she doesn't want to uh, have, uh, like, you know, uh, menstruation also. She doesn't, she's not, like, say, like, she's saying, like, I don't want to have any menstruation. My family is completed. Doctor, you want to do, whatever you want to do, you do it. Now, in these females, what we can do is, ward myohysterectomy. Okay, ward myohysterectomy. What is ward myohysterectomy? We are removing the uterus. Okay, that is vaginal hysterectomy, vaginal wave. Okay, via vaginal route, we are removing the uterus. Along with that, we are repairing the pelvic floor. Okay, we are repairing the pelvic floor. Along with that, what we are doing? We are doing sacrospinous fixation. Okay, sacrospinous colpopexy. Sacrospinous colpopexy. Okay, we are doing. Now, this is, uh, this is what we are going to do in ward myo hysterectomy. Done. Now, let's take, a, uh, like, let's take a clinical case where a female who is suffering with a uterus cervical prolapse. Okay, a female who is suffering with uterus cervical prolapse. Now, just after delivering the baby, that is, uterocervical prolapse happened during puerperium. During puerperium, if there is uterocervical, utero, uh, sorry, uterocervical prolapse. During puerperium, if there is uterocervical prolapse, what we have to do? Ring pessary. During, pres uh, during pregnancy, if there is uterine prolapse, again, ring pessary. Okay, if there is contraindication for the surgery, young female who is having contraindication for the surgery, or she is refusing the surgery, what we can do? You have to go with again ring pessary. Old female who is having contraindication for the surgery. Okay, old female. Normally in old female, what we will do? Old female. Now she is having contraindication for the surgery. Normally leaf out calvoclysis. But now our old female, she is also having contraindication for anesthesia also. See, for calvoclysis, you have to give anesthesia. For calvoclysis, you have to give anesthesia. Normally, try to understand. Don't confuse. Sir, normal female. Normally, sorry. Old female, old female, old female, if she is having contraindication for the surgery, what we have to do is, we have to do lifoid calpoclesis. But for lifoid calpoclesis, at least we have to give anesthesia. But now our scenario is, old female, she is having contraindication for the surgery, but she is also having contraindication for anesthesia also. You, you, like, you know, she can't take anesthesia also. Now, what we can do is simply ring pessary. Just keep a ring. Okay, just keep a ring. It will act as a mechanical support, which will prevent the uterocervical prolapse. Okay, so these are the different different clinical scenarios I have discussed with you. And one important point, guys, whenever she desire pregnancy, what you can do is only only sling surgery. Okay, but what is one important exception? What is one important exception? Okay, let's see. There was this one female who is twenty five years old. Who is twenty five years old? Now she is desiring preg future pregnancy or not? Yes, sir. She is desiring future pregnancy, but there is one place where you are not supposed to do sling surgery. She is desiring future pregnancy, but there is one indication where you are not supposed to do sling surgery. Where, guys? If her uterocervical length is increased, sir, remember, if uterocervical length is increased, no sling surgery. Fother Gills Manchester surgery. We have to go with the Fother Gills Manchester surgery. Okay? So, I have given you different, different clinical scenarios of uterine prolapse and their managements. Okay, different, different clinical scenarios and their management. Now, let's talk about what else can be done. Okay, what else can be done? Sir, there is something, there are some important exercises called as Kegel's exercises. Kegel's exercises. What are these Kegel's exercises? Now, Kegel's exercises are the ones which are used to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. Okay, now what is this? See, your pelvic floor muscles are voluntary muscles. Actually, you, you can, like, you know, you try it. You can actually contract your pelvic floor muscles, you can relax them. You can contract them, you can relax them. You can contract them, you can relax them. Just like your biceps, whenever you exercise your biceps, it's going to become stronger. Just like that, you can also contract and relax, contract and relax your pelvic floor muscles. So what happens? The pelvic diaphragm, it will become stronger. It will strengthen. What it will do? It will prevent the prolapse. So Kegel's exercises are the exercises for strengthening the pelvic floor muscles. Okay, now this is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. Kegel's exercises. Now, after Kegel's exercises, I just want to talk 
about vaginal prolapse guys vaginal prolapse utero cervical prolapse completed utero cervical prolapse completed right now i just want to topic i just want to start a small topic which is called as vaginal prolapse now what is vaginal prolapse sir try to understand here i am showing you see this is the area where vagina is there okay this is the area of vagina okay let me highlight it with you see this is the anterior vaginal wall okay right with blue color i am highlighting you anterior vaginal wall now with green color i am highlighting the posterior vaginal wall so from this image we can clearly see the anterior vaginal wall is smaller when compared to posterior vaginal wall anterior vaginal wall is having small length when compared to the posterior vaginal wall now see for example if this anterior vaginal wall is weakened imagine the anterior vaginal wall is weakened now if anterior vaginal wall is weakened now what will happen sir anterior to anterior vaginal wall please concentrate on my words anterior to anterior vaginal wall which structures are present sir in the upper in the upper half in the upper half there is uterus sorry there is urinary bladder present the urinary bladder, bladder is present over here and inferiorly inferiorly in the lower half anteriorly what do you have sir urethra is present here is the area of urethra now what i am trying to put into your mind is sir in a normal female in a normal female anterior to anterior vaginal wall you have two important structures one is urinary bladder and other is urethra other is urethra okay well and good now let's see let's talk about the posterior vaginal wall guys let's talk about posterior vaginal wall now posterior to posterior vaginal wall which structures are present see this is the posterior vaginal wall now back to the posterior vaginal wall which structures are present in the upper half in the upper area what is there in the upper one third in the upper one third cul de sac is present in the upper one third cul de sac is present in the middle one third in the middle one third directly rectum is present okay rectum is present and in the lower one third this perineum is present this area is called as a perineum so what i am trying to put into your mind is sir posterior to posterior vaginal wall or back to posterior vaginal wall three important structures are present what are they cul de sac cul de sac okay rectum rectum is present rectum is present and lower one third lower one third perineum is present perineum and perineal muscles are present now after seeing this what i want you to understand is sir for example if the anterior vaginal wall is weakened for example if this anterior vaginal wall is weakened it became weak because some reason it became weak and if it is weakened what happens this urinary bladder it's now going to fall back the urinary bladder is going to fall back see this urinary bladder it will fall back and it will come out okay so it is falling back so this wall this wall of the vagina it will come out through the introitus so anterior vaginal wall it will come out why because bladder is falling back and the bladder is falling back so that what you will have is something called as a cystocel so cystocel is a complication of what just tell me the cystocel is a complication because of the weakening of anterior vaginal wall or sometimes what can happen is this urethra also okay even urethra can also fall back okay urethra can also fall back leading to urethrocele usually both bladder and urethra they will fall back onto the weakened anterior wall okay they will fall back onto the weakened anterior wall and it will cause prolapse of the vagina it will cause prolapse of the vagina so the anterior vaginal wall it's prolapsing and it's coming out something like this so this is called as cysto urethrocel cysto urethrocel so now tell me guys upper two third upper two third okay i am talking about the anterior vaginal wall guys if there is a defect i am talking right now i am talking about the anterior vaginal wall if there if there is a defect in anterior vaginal wall upper two third region this area okay see here in this upper two third region there will be bladder falling back leading to cysto seal that bladder cysto means bladder it's falling back a prolapsing cystocele or you can have cystocele along with urethrocele both the combination both combinations are also possible so cysto urethrocele is a defect due to anterior vaginal wall and if there is any defect in the lower one third of the anterior vaginal wall if there is a defect in the lower one third lower one third what will happen the urethra it's going to fall back urethra is going to fall back leading to 
urethrocele. So how many types of vaginal prolapse are possible? How many types of vaginal prolapse is possible with the anterior vaginal wall? Sir, cystocele or urethrocele. So cystocele and urethrocele are examples of vaginal prolapse. Anterior vaginal wall prolapse. Anterior vaginal wall is falling back. Falling back. Okay. Now let's talk about posterior vaginal wall, guys. I have clearly explained you, sir. Upper one third, middle one third, lower one third, lower one third. Now, whenever there is any weakness in the upper one third, whenever any weakness in the upper one third of the posterior vaginal wall, that will cause enterocele. Enterocele. Why? Why? Because all this area, cul de sac, is the area where intestines are there, right? Intestines are there. Okay. Actually, there are beautiful animations which I want to show, but I couldn't be able to show you guys. Okay, I will just try to uh, play one more time. Let's see whether it's possible or not. Let me try to play this. Uh, let me try to play the video. Okay, I couldn't able to play it. But anyway, see here, I, what I'm trying to show you is, sir, this is the posterior vaginal wall. This is the posterior vaginal wall. Now, posterior vaginal wall is in a close proximity with the, it's in a close proximity with the cul de sac. So, in the cul de sac region, there are intestines present. So, what happens is whenever there is a weakness here in this area, upper one third area, in the upper one third area, all the intestines will fall down. All the intestines, they will push down the posterior vaginal wall. See, concentrate on my words. The intestines will push down that weakened wall and those intestines are going to come down. They will fall down. So, this is called as, this is called as enterocele, enterocele. Okay, so enterocele is the defect due to upper one third of the posterior vaginal wall. So whenever there is any defect in the middle one third of the posterior vaginal wall, here this area in the middle one third of the posterior vaginal wall, this rectum is there, right? Here you can clearly see the rectum. This rectum is going to fall anteriorly. This rectum will fall anteriorly that will cause rectocele. And the lower one third, lower one third, if there is any weakness, if there is any weakness in the lower one third, this perineum, this perineum is going to fall anteriorly like this. Actually, the posterior vaginal wall, it is supporting, it's actually supporting the cul de sac, it's actually supporting the rectum, it's actually supporting the perineum. Whenever there is a weakness, now intestines will fall, rectum will fall anteriorly and perineal uh, tissues are also going to fall anteriorly, causing laxed perineum, rectocele and enterocele. Now, from this, what I am trying to say is, sir, there is anterior vaginal wall and posterior vaginal wall. Now, whenever there is defect in anterior vaginal wall, it causes cystocele or urethrocele. In the same way, whenever there is defect in posterior vaginal wall, now defect in the upper one third of posterior vaginal wall will cause enterocele. Defect in the middle part of the posterior vaginal wall will cause enterocele. Sorry, upper is enterocele, middle defect will cause rectocele, and lower one third of the uh, posterior vaginal wall defect will cause laxed perineum. So now what to do, sir? Now what to do? The treatment is very simple, guys. Now, treatment, what we are going to do is, see, the management of the vaginal prolapse. Now, for cystocele and urethrocele. Sir, cystocele and urethrocele are the complications because of the weakness of anterior vaginal wall. So now what you have to do? You have to strengthen the anterior vaginal wall. Strengthening of the anterior vaginal wall. So that... Surgery is called as anterior calpo raphi. Anterior means anterior side. Calpos means vaginal wall. So anterior calpo raphi is the surgery which is done for vaginal prolapse. Anterior vaginal wall prolapse. Anterior vaginal wall prolapse including cystocele and urethrocele. Now whenever there is enterocele, now think logically and tell me. Sir, enterocele. Just try to answer. Sir, enterocele is a defect due to anterior vaginal wall or posterior vaginal wall? Sir, posterior vaginal wall. So even posterior vaginal wall, upper one third, whenever the posterior vaginal wall have any defect in the upper one third, that will cause enterocele, sir. Now how to treat, what is the surgery we are going to do? It's the surgery names, there are three important surgeries, just try to remember these names, that's enough for your exam. Sir, surgeries like Moscovitz surgery, Halban surgery and Mechical Caldoplasty, okay. Mechical Caldoplasty, Moscovitz surgery and Halban surgery are the surgeries which are used to be done, which are done for treating enterocele and sir lectocele and laxed perineum rectocele and laxed perineum are due to these are the complications due to posterior vaginal wall prolapse in the middle one third and lower one third 
So now what is the surgery we have to do? Posterior vaginal wall, simple. Posterior calpo perineo raphi. Posterior calpo raphi as well as perineo raphi. Why? Because laxed perineum. Perineum, you also have to support the perineum. So anterior vaginal wall defect, simple. Anterior calpo raphi. Interoceal, Moscovite surgery, Halban surgery. Okay, Moscovite surgery, Halban surgery and Meckel caldoplasty. And posterior wall defects like posterior wall defects causing rectocele and laxer perineum are treated with posterior calpo perineo raphi. So, I have discussed different types of different clinical scenarios of uterocervical prolapse and their management. After that, I have discussed about different types of vaginal prolapse, anterior vaginal wall prolapses including cystocele urethrocele and posterior vaginal wall prolapses including enterocele, rectocele and laxer perineum and their management. With this, the topic of uterine prolapse is completed. Hope the video is helpful. See you in our next video. Okay, see you in your next video. We will come up with new and interesting topics from obstetrics and gynecology. Thank you guys.